All right, so what we're going to do is model this really simple spaceship here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click out outside of this view. You should be pretty comfortable sort of rotating around or moving around a scene. If not, I'm going to explain each step, how you can middle mouse click to rotate. I'm really just going to delete all three of these in our scene here. And well, let's start with the biggest form of the body, and it's this bowling pin here. So what I like to do is... Um, really just kind of start with a cube and smooth it out and then I start to shape that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up here to add mesh and I'm gonna click on, click on cube. And there's this modeling style called smooth mesh modeling or sub D modeling in some programs. And what it is is you go in here and you add a modifier and the modifier that you're adding is a subdivision surface modifier. The entire time this thing really is just the box, but what this subdivision modifier does is it lets you sort of look at this model or model it at different subdivision levels. And it also keeps your model in quads, which what that means is there's no triangle. So you can see this is a four-sided face, all that other stuff. But you're also um, always just working with this cube. So you're sort of working with a lower resolution model and it allows you to have multiple resolutions. Um, so let's go ahead and take this up to two here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my move tool. And I'm just going to move this so that it's sitting right on the grid here. And I'm going to elongate it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go to from edit from object mode here to edit mode. And I'm going to select these four vertices. Now, if you're at a weird view like this and you go to select it, you'll notice that you're not able to select the back facing or the things in the back. Go ahead and turn on this x-ray mode here and highlight all four of these edges and just pull it up like this. And so what we did is we essentially stretched this out. Now what I wanna do is add some subdivisions or ring cuts to sort of shape this out. So for instance, um, let's go ahead and hit S to scale this out. I wanna scale this out so that it, it has that bigger shape like that, but I also want it to be flat on the bottom. So over here in edit mode, remember we're in edit mode here, we're gonna look for our loop cut tool and I'm going to left click with my mouse but I'm not going to release my left mouse button I'm just going to bring it all the way down and you can see here that it created that flat bottom but we still don't have that nice roundness um, so let's go ahead and actually add another ring cut in the middle like this and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit um, shift and space to grab my move tool here you could also go up here and grab it this way I'm going to highlight and drag a marquee around that bottom and hit S to scale. And I'm just going to scale it in a little bit. So something like this. Now we haven't even made the tip of the this object yet. So I'm just going to kind of pull that in and shape that. And I kind of have really that, that, that uh, shape going at this point. So let's hit tab and go to object mode. I'm going to right click and shade smooth. And let's get out of this for a second. And that looks pretty good. That looks pretty much what it looks like. And um, next, we'll, we want to go ahead and create the little part that sticks out of the bottom there. So let's go ahead and hit Shift and Space and just move this up a little bit. And then I'm going to go up here to Add, and I'm going to add another cube. So something like that. And just off to the side here, I'm going to hit Control and 3. And what that did is that went ahead and added that modifier for me. Let's actually take it down to two. And I'm gonna right click and do shade smooth. Now I'm gonna hit control, uh, I'm gonna hit tab and go to edit. And instead of going to the side here and selecting the ring tool uh, or the loop cut tool, notice as I leave my cursor on there, loop at the very bottom of the explanation, it says control plus R. Now if I hit control R and I click on this, I can add um, those two cuts and now I have another cylinder that I made out of that cube. So I'm gonna tab and go to object mode. I'm just gonna move it into place here. And it's a little, it sticks in a little bit too far. So I'm gonna hit S to scale and then Z for the Z axis. And just to kind of shrink that down. And I'm gonna hit S to scale that out a little bit more and just position that at the bottom. Now it's not perfect exactly like this only slightly sticks out and you know, I can go in here and go to edit mode and Let's go to x-ray and scale in that whole bottom by hitting S to scale that in because it's got a little bit of an arch. But I think for now, um, that looks good enough. 
All right, so I'm not gonna use the smooth primitive approach just so I can show you a different modeling approach. I'm gonna create the window with the rim around it just using some other primitives. So in object mode, I'm gonna go to add and I'm gonna go to mesh here and I'm just gonna add a, a, geo, a UV sphere. So something like this. And actually let's undo that for a second. Let's go to add mesh UV sphere and let's go click on add UV sphere here. Let's move this out of the way. And for segments, let's just take this down to 12. Um, maybe 10. Okay. And then what I want to do is right click and do shade smooth. And that kind of flattens it out. Now let's hit tab and go to edit mode. And I'm just going to delete out half of this model. So go ahead and click on x-ray mode and then hit the number three or go to face mode and just highlight all of these faces here and then hit X and then do delete faces. All right, so I'm gonna tab and go to object mode. I'm just gonna move this off to the side. And the next thing I wanna do is create the little torus that exists around it. So I'm gonna to go to add and I'm gonna click on mesh and then torus. And same thing as before, I don't think I need that many segments. So let's see, uh, maybe 12 is fine. And minor segments, and we'll do 10. And then what I'm gonna do here is just position it around that window, right click and do shade smooth. Hit S to scale this up. And I really don't need anything, well, I guess this might stick out a little bit. But anyway, I'm gonna hold, I'm in object mode here. So I'm holding shift and I'm selecting both of these. And I'm gonna hit control J. And what that does is that groups them together into one object. So it makes it easier for me to move it around. And I'll just call this window. So I'm going to double click this and type window. Oops, looks like I hit have caps lock on. And I'm going to move this up. And then I want to click on this tool here, which is rotate. You can also hit shift space bar and select rotate. And I'm just going to rotate that a little bit. Now, if you want to know exact increments, um, let's see. We have our uh, modifiers. No, that's a, not a modifier. What am I thinking? Uh, really, you can just hit N like Nancy, and then that brings up the item selection here. But I know there's another way in here. Am I, am I losing it in my old age or something hidden? Um, where we have our transform properties. I don't go in here that often outside of the modifier steps. You have to forgive me. Here we go. So under transform here, you can see there's a couple ways. There's rotate Y, so we could type in 90 degrees here, and you could see it also updates here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift spacebar, grab my move tool, move it into place here, and then I'm just gonna hit S to scale that down. And then again, just kind of move this out a little bit. And it might need to be rotated, you know, I can kind of free rotate it by hitting R and then I can actually hit S to scale it, and I'm gonna scale this on the X axis and just kind of flatten that out a little bit. All right, um, maybe we need one on each side. So if we hit Control D here, I don't know why somebody, or Shift D rather, I can duplicate that. You know what, let's just leave it alone. We'll have it flying upside down or something this way. All right, so we have that, we have these. Let's go ahead and just create these fins and We'll use like a different modeling method for these fins. All right, so what we can do is um, let's do add and let's go to mesh and we'll do like a circle this time. And on the, it's down here on the bottom. So what I wanna do is just get it so it's sideways. So I'm gonna add 90 and the X and the Y and then just sort of position it on the side here. Um, let's see, just trying to think of cool, ways that you can dabble or play with modeling. I mean, you could always go to, um, you know, watch some other tutorials on the internet and just do a bunch of modeling if this excites you or you're having fun with this. So I'm gonna hit tab here, I'm gonna go to edit mode. And what I wanna do is dissolve some of these vertices because I'm in vertex mode. So it gives me a straight line. So I can actually just kind of grab or marquee, let's see. I'm gonna hit shift and space and make sure I'm on my move tool and grab really something where I can see almost a direct line. Then I'm gonna hit X and I'm gonna go to dissolve vertices and I'll get that line. What I wanna do though is, actually let's dissolve these two. So I'm gonna select those and then hit X and dissolve vertices. And 
one. Eh, no, that's about, we want it like that. Okay. I'm going to select this um, vert here and I'm going to hit G to move, but notice it only moves that individual vertice. If I turn on this, which is proportional editing or soft selection in other programs, and I hit G, if I scroll the wheel of my mouse in and out, what it allows me to do is, G is, remember, move mode. I can kind of softly move or edit this. So, for example, like I want this over here to pinch a little bit more. I want this to move down. So I'm just trying to get, I'm just kind of sculpting trying to get that fin shape and I'm actually seeing that my fin goes all the way down here so let's just go to tab and go to object mode and just move it down like this and then I'm gonna yank this whole thing invert you know go to edit mode it's like this hit G and I'm just gonna pull this top part up a little bit scroll my wheel a little bit like that and I'm just trying to get you to play with these different tools, experiment. So we have this, and it doesn't, it goes pretty much pretty low. I guess maybe the rocket sits on this. And let's hit G again, just kind of shape that out a little bit. I'm just scrolling the wheel and playing with this. Your rocket doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to, again, just practice these different tools. All right, so let's take this off. Now you might be like, well, there's no mesh there. There's no meat. If you go to face here and fill, uh, actually, you want to hit A, and you want to go to Face, and then hit Fill or Alt F. It fills it, and then to give it some more meat, so it doesn't just look like a flat wafer, hit Three to go to Face Mode, and then hit A to select all those faces. Then you can hit E to extrude that out, like that. And there is your little rocket uh, objects. Let's go to Object Mode. Your little fin area. And we want to add one on each side. So just for fun, go ahead and hit Control D, or sorry, Alt D to duplicate. And then I'm going to hit Y and just move it to the other side. And um, we'll go ahead and rotate this on the Z axis. Let's see, uh, minus 90. Yeah, and then we'll just kind of pull that inside like this. Something like this. Um, and there are a little bit more advanced ways of doing this, but I just want to get you comfortable with like figuring out how to move stuff. Let's kind of try to center this here. And um, if you start getting into exact measurements and stuff, you you lose that spatial relationship. So I want you to fiddle. I want you to try to eyeball. And it's kind of fun to do all these things where you're just sort of doing all this. And then we need one in the front. So I'm going to hold hit Alt, uh, Alt D again. And we're going to rotate it zero this time and then move this down a little bit. And let's actually kind of, again, I just want you guys to get comfortable eyeballing this stuff. Maybe this needs to be a little higher. Same thing here, Alt D. And you could hit X as you copy it and it'll just lock it on one axis. And then let's do minus 90 here. No, we want this to be. 90 and then we want this to be 90. Uh, minus 90? 180? Yeah, 180. Uh, so there's all of our fins. So let's go ahead and hit A to select all of our objects in the scene and control J. Oops, you know what? We got to apply that modifier because if I hit control, so I'm hitting A and then I'm hitting control J to join it you'll notice it doesn't attach those attributes. Like it doesn't um, it doesn't apply this. Remember, this is just a modifier. Like we actually, this is what our box looks like. So I'm gonna select this and I'm going to go ahead and hit this drop down and hit either Control A or Apply. I'm gonna select this, hit Control A or Apply. And then these should all be applied now. I think that's the only thing that's smooth. So let's go ahead and select all of this, hit Control and J. And I'm gonna hit Shift A and I wanna do mesh, or I'm sorry, Control A. I wanna reset all of those transforms so that it's, so reset all transforms. And then I'm gonna, you could see here that our pivot point is in the bottom there. And that's it for modeling. What we'll do in the next video is we'll unwrap and we'll paint or texture this guy.